you. I, I, thank you for the crowd. That's good at sound booth. It, we've been having a little trouble with my mic lately, and, and it was looked a little bit frayed, and so I, I just happened to have one in my office, plugged it in, and it worked, and, and, and uh, really we've had difficulty almost since I've gotten it. Thank you, Lord. Well, listen, if you listen online, we're glad that you're with us. We want you to let us know you're there, like it. Uh, uh, we ask those listening online to like it and love it, share it, uh, make a comment. If you're here, we ask our church family to share it and just help us to, you know, to reach a, a broader audience uh, with the message. And, uh, you know, you, I just, I rarely go to town and somebody doesn't tell me uh, that they're listening online. Uh, you know, I go different places. I even have family, you know, tell me, ah, you know, Bill, we listen. And, you know, they'll, they'll say something about something we said. And I'm sometimes a little, little surprised. Now i got some family members that listen very faithfully. And uh, anyway, uh, if you share it, it's a, uh, I, I, I count it a blessing. Appreciate it ever so much. Well, let me pray. Father, thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for this opportunity to share your word, to teach and to preach your gospel. Thank you that your word's good seed. And as it's sown on good ground in our hearts, that it will produce good fruit. And we thank you for it in, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. First Peter, the third chapter, verse 4. We've been talking about the, the hidden man, the hidden person, the inward man. It says in first, first Peter 3, 4, it mentions it. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. Even more true than there is an outward man. You know, the Bible says the outward man is perishing. We have an outward person. The Lord has promised us 70 or 80 years. Or with long life, He will satisfy you. But then, there's the inward man. The hidden man. Now you may not be able to see it. Just like you know you can't see God. But you see the influence. The effects. See when I, when I see Jennifer, uh, there's a parts of her that I, I, you can't really see her, her joy. Sometimes you see expressions of it, but she can have it whether or not that you see it. She can be enjoying the peace of God, and you may not see it, but it's absolutely there. And that's what we enjoy in that inner man. This is the part of us that has fellowship with God. Peter says, let it be the hidden man of the heart. 2 Corinthians 4.16, we read the, or quoted the, the first part, though our outward man perish, Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Because the inward man is this. He's eternal. So when we're talking about this inward person, this spiritual person. Uh, the first of the year I did a series on Wednesday night uh, called Spiritual Growth. And during that, uh, that series, we, we, we talked about the importance of understanding that I am a spirit. Say that with me. I am, and I am a spirit. I know lots of people aren't even comfortable saying that. But the truth is, you are. You are a spiritual being on the inside of you. We'll prove it here in a second, all right? You know, we use the Word of God, and, and we'll, we'll make the case. I am a spirit. Say it again. I have a soul, and I live in a body. Your spiritual man is going to last forever. Everybody's going to spend eternity somewhere. You can live forever or die forever. Boy, that's a sad thought, isn't it? But I want to live forever. Can you say amen? amen? I want to help as many people as I possibly can to live forever. You know that spirit, that inward man, that hidden man in the heart, it has, a, it has this, it has a divine origin. And it says in Genesis 2-7, it says this, God breathed. We'll read that verse, Genesis 2, 7. And then it says, And the Lord formed the man from the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostril the breath of life. And man became a living being. 
This is the distinguishing part between humankind and the rest of all of creation. See, the spirit of man could not have evolved. There was a moment in time when God took that man that he formed and he breathed into him. The Amplified says he breathed into him the spirit of life and he became a living being. So this is why you and I have the capacity to problem solve. This is why we have that thing called creativity. We can sing. We can paint. We can sculpt. We can invent. You know, there's only 3% difference in the DNA between a, a, a monkey and a man. It's the greatest difference in the universe. And it's right here. He breathed into man the spirit of life. And that soul, that intellect, that will, that creativity, that ability to, to make decisions, to understand what restraint is, to value freedom, it's because he breathed into man the, the breath of life, the spirit of life. We're talking about the hidden man, the inward man. Genesis 3, 8 through 10 says, And they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And then the Lord God called to Adam and he said, Adam! Where are you? He said, I heard your voice in the garden. I was afraid. I was naked. And I hid myself. It's a revealing verse. I've, I've shared this numerous times over the years. And to me, it, it, it says so much. Because when we look at Adam and Eve... In the garden, I want you to think about this. In the garden, they were acquainted with the presence of God. They were acquainted with it. They knew He was there. He was present. They were acquainted with God's presence. They were also acquainted with the voice of God. He come to the garden to walk with them and talk with them. The old gospel song, I come to the garden alone. For he walks with me and he talks with me. See, you and I is, again, we are, we are a spiritual being. It's a part of us that's going to live forever. Real life. It's going to last for eternity. But even in this lifetime, we should understand something and be acquainted with the presence of God. Max Licato said this, We Christians are always in the presence of God. There is never a non-sacred moment. I like the way he says that. His presence never diminishes. Our awareness of His presence may falter, but the reality of His presence never changes. I want you to I've underlined that. Our awareness. See, we know that it's, it's, it's one of the descriptions of God. He is the ever-present Lord. But are we aware of it? Again, he's always here, but how aware are we of it? In Psalm 16, 8, the psalmist says, I know the Lord and he's always with me and, and I will not be shaken for he is right, he's right beside me. 
you do understand there would be so many verses that we could share and talk about just the presence of God. There was a monk who wrote a book years ago. It was called Practicing His Presence. His name was Brother Andrew. And as a monk, one of his duties was, you know, when, in, when, you, when you live a life like they lived in, in that day and time, and there are still orders of, of, of priests that live very strict lives, a very disciplined life, a, a very frugal life. And his job was to, to work in the kitchen. And while working in the kitchen, he, he thought, you know, I can do this and I can be very mindful concerning the presence of God. It changed his life. Because of what happened to him during those times, and he not only practiced it in the kitchen, but he began to practice it throughout his life to be mindful of the presence of God, seeing awareness. And this is us, an awareness. I, I can't tell you how many times in my life that I started to do something and that, that awareness kicked in. Again, Max Licato says, every moment's a sacred moment. A quote from Brother Lawrence, he said, The most holy and necessary practice in our spiritual life is the presence of God. That means finding constant pleasure in His divine company. This is one of the beautiful things about worship. When you worship God, if you do it with your heart, you're practicing the presence of God. You be aware. You know that He's listening. He says, I inhabit the praise of my people. His divine company speaking humbly and loving, lovingly with Him in all seasons at every moment without limiting the conversation in any way. Well, what a great thought. What a wonderful thought. Right in the middle of Walmart. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you. Again, awareness. Practicing the presence of God. God is what? He's very present. We know the Bible says he's a very present help in a time of trouble. He's always present, but there are times that he's even more present. He says he's with the brokenhearted. He's there to heal them. Jesus said one of the reasons he came was to heal the brokenhearted. It's what present. You know, Jesus was aware of the presence of God. At one time, they, they, they let a man down on a, on a bed in front of him. They tore up the roof. They let him down and... And it says this in the, in the presence of God, and God was there present to heal. He recognized it. The God who is present is also a God who does this. He speaks. He speaks. Adam and Eve were aware of the nearness of God. When he entered the garden, they knew he was on the scene. One old preacher said one time they wouldn't know God if he was walking down Main Street with a red hat on. The hidden man. The hidden man, the inward man. He hears, what, he hears that voice of God. This is why the awareness is so important. People say, I've never heard God speak. Everybody should hear him. Well, maybe not in the way that you hear my voice, but it could be. It could be. I'm not going to say it's the most often way, but everybody ought to be able to hear the, the voice of God. In John 10, 7, 10, 27, it says this, My sheep hear my voice. Say that with me. My sheep hear my voice. Yeah. Now listen, if, if that's not true, if we can't hear his voice, then why did he say it? My sheep hear my voice. I know them. And he says, and, and, and they follow me. Hebrews 3, 3, 7, I love this verse. And the Holy Spirit says, today. Everybody say, today. That's not tomorrow. It's not next week. It's not next year. It's not yesterday. Today, if you will hear my voice. Exodus 3, 11. I love this. The Lord would speak to Moses. I love this. David, face to face. Personally intentionally, intimately, speak to him face to face. 
as a man speaks with what? His friend. Boy, isn't that good news? It's not, it's not God who's angry all the time. God spoke to Moses face to face. Now, when he says that, that's not to say that he can't have a difficult conversation, because sometimes friends have to have difficult conversations. But it's a friend. It's a father. And he speaks, speaks what he speaks to this inward man. But again, if there's not an understanding that we, we are a spiritual being. That inward man has ears that can hear. That inward man has eyes and he can see. As a man speaks to his friend. Let me run through this list real quickly and then I'll take you to some verses. I'm trying to emphasize two things this morning. I've got a friend that says you should never have more than three points. So I've got a long message with two points. We're talking about the presence of God and we're talking about the voice of God. This inward man is able to be aware, to be acquainted with the, both the presence of God and the voice of God. And God does speak to us. And every way that He does speak to us is supernatural. Because we have a spiritual being. You know, He's the Father of all spirits. He's a spiritual being. And He speaks to us. He speaks to us through His Word. He speaks in dreams and visions. He can and does speak in an audible voice. He speaks through others. Well, these last two, if I, if I were going to spend the bulk of my time anywhere, it would be with these last two. He speaks by an inward witness. I'll, I'll spend a few moments there when I get there. I'll, I'll try to move through these and spend a little more time there. He speaks by an inward witness. It's in here. Proverbs says this. I don't think I have it in my notes. It says, The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. And he searches all the inward parts. So what is the candle? The candle is a way to light the path, to give direction. Romans says that the sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. There's a, what an inward witness. And then finally, there's this. Something that should be very common in believers' lives. These last two should be the most common. Well, I shouldn't say that, just these last two. Gosh, the Lord speaks through us through His Word all the time. But by an inward witness, and with a still small voice, I think as I went through that list, I failed to say, God does speak to us through others. Let's look at His Word real quick. I've spent some time talking about this in previous messages, so specifically out of Hebrews, the fourth chapter and verse 12. It says, for the word that God speaks, I like the way that reads, for the word that God what? speaks is alive. It's full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. That is how it should affect you, and it's how it should affect you and I. That's why hearing the word of God causes faith to arise in people's hearts. Why? It's active, it's operative, it's energizing, it's effective in our lives. God speaks how? He speaks to us through His Word, through an audible voice. Now, this just Bill, all right? You know, it, you know, people do have experiences. We shouldn't trip. I, pet peeve, all right? I, I do not like... And, and, and most of the time you hear preachers say it, and then you, sometimes you'll hear somebody quote the preachers. But I hear preachers say, Oh, they had a dream. Not really. They ate pizza with too many pepperonis on it. Well, buddy, just because you didn't have a dream, it doesn't mean somebody else don't have a dream. Did Joseph eat too many pepperonis? You understand we want to trivialize. Those are the cessationless, okay? Everything ended, all right? 
Listen, God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, I've only had a couple times in my life that I've heard God speak out loud. Just a couple times. And it wasn't a lot. It was just short to the point. But I have just, but just a couple times in my whole life in believing that He does. But now that's not to say that there's not others that haven't heard it more often than that. But I don't believe it's the number one way that God leads you, but He can. And you know, and He, and he, and he speaks to us. We're what? We're, we're spiritual beings. It says concerning Jesus. He says to the Father, Father, glorify your name. He's speaking. What's he doing? He's speaking to God. He's our example. Then a voice came from heaven and said, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. Now the crowd standing heard it. Say that with me. The crowd standing heard it. But you know what they heard? Thunder. They heard thunder. You know, there in, in, in years gone by, and you understand man was primitive. He was limited in understanding. He certainly didn't have a revelation of God like the written word. Christ had died on the cross. But that is what people believed when it thundered God was speaking. But on this day it did not thunder. God, it says what God said. But you understand, they're not aware. They're not acquainted with it. You know, uh, Kenya is, a, is an English-speaking country, by and large. You know, that you've heard me say they speak three languages. They speak, uh, they speak Swahili, they have a tribal language, there's 34 of them, and then they speak English. And, and the bulk of them speak English, except they don't speak the same English that we do here in Texas County. They often have to have an interpreter when I speak. And David, I don't think I have much of an accent. You understand, Jennifer, you know. Uh, and of course, if I spoke like an Aussie or an Australian, well, they would be much more, it'd be much more understandable. And when, boy, if I get to preaching and I, I pick up the speed, well, then they're just lost. They're not acquainted with it. They're not acquainted with it. But now... This is the crowd. They're not acquainted with the voice of God. Some said an angel has spoken to him, and Jesus answered and said, This voice has come for your sake and not for mine. Again, we said that, you know, that God does speak in dreams and visions. Job said this, and there would be plenty of evidence that God speaks through dreams and visions. Jacob saw the ladder coming from heaven. Ananias had a dream, saw Paul coming. Job 33, verse 15 says, At night when people are asleep, God speaks. What? In, in dreams and visions. What's he do? He speaks. He's got something to say. Dreams and visions. The Bible says that I believe it. Again, now this would be one of those areas. I, I, I tell you, I've only had, I've only had about three dreams that had where I felt like God, God was speaking, again, in my whole life. And they were not, for me, they weren't defining moments. But gosh, it, gosh, it was a blessing. They weren't defining moments. Uh, one was for someone else. Somebody was really struggling, you know. And, I, you know, I'm just sitting there, and all of a sudden I see something else. He said, Bill, you're weird. No, I'm telling you, it happened. I'm not weird. It just really happened. I didn't plan it. You just interrupted my life. One was at night. One night, one night I'm sleeping and I'm dreaming about the crucifixion. I see the crowd, I see the people. I'm struggling, struggling to get to him. And I can't get to him. I'm so troubled. He's off in the distance. I see him on the cross. He bows his head. 
He's gone. He's died. For a moment, I'm, I'm, I'm just devastated, Randy. For just a moment. And then all of a sudden, there's a twinkle in his eye. And it tells me this. He's raised and he's coming again. For the scripture says that you and I will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. The third one was pretty personal. Now, I have had God speak to me through other people. Right? Now, not everybody who speaks, I'm always polite, but not everybody who speaks to me is heard from the Lord. If he's not spoke to me, I don't change nothing in my life. I could, you can't imagine the long... Now listen, I have had people speak to me and it was spot on. Spot on. I believe had somebody not seen. They saw the truck accident. Years, about four years before I had it, I was hit at, uh, on 60 and 105 uh, there at Rogersville. Diesel truck hit me. It hit a square in the back. You know, closest I came. Matter of fact, I was for a moment I was closer to that side than I am this side. It was, and it wasn't spooky. There was nothing scary about it. it changed everything I thought about dying. It's, it's really, it's, it's all right. I was close. Now I'm grateful to be here because I love my wife and and uh, I want to take care of her. And uh, you know, listen, I, I love living, but boy, it was, it was all right. It was good. There was nothing spooky about it. And. Uh, 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 But in that moment, uh, you know, again, had it not been for somebody told me ahead of time, years, years ahead, I see great danger. A large red truck is exactly what hit me. A large red, red truck. So ahead of time, you know, I, I mean, I didn't spend a lot of time. I didn't spend the rest of my life thinking about it, praying about it. But I did pray. And I said, Lord, you are very present help in my life. You're my keeper. You're my deliverer. And Father, you, I believe the angel of the Lord encamps around about me. I love and fear God. If you'd saw my car, you'd say, gosh, how do you, you know, it's one of those. We see them. But it, this was one of those. It hit my car so hard. You know, lots of cars. The car I'm driving right now has got two seams that run over the top, and then there's a real nice molding in that seam. And many cars, when they build them, uh, when they put that top on, it strengthens the top, and there's a spot weld all the way down through there on both sides of that car. It hit that car so hard, it broke all the spot welds across, uh, across the back of the car where the back window is, and all the way up both sides, and they laid that over the top, and they cut me out of that car. Uh, and, uh, but listen, uh, somebody saw that, and they said something to me. Yeah, God can speak to us through others. Uh, and then I've had encouraging things, encouraging things. Now, when people tell me, oh, you're going to be great. Oh, and you're going to have a voice like Billy Graham. I just, I it's not God. God's not making any, he doesn't want to make me great. He doesn't want to make your child great. He wants them to make them like his son. Yeah, yeah, that's foolishness. That's somebody caught up in the flesh. Can you say Amen. Yeah, was somebody giving you a great prophecy about your kid and they blowed them all up? Listen to me. God doesn't blow up people. I'm meddling now. But Ananias went his way and he entered into a house and he laid hands on him. And he said to him, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you, on the road as you came, he has sent me that you might receive your sight. You might be filled with the Holy Spirit. He had, yeah, he had heard from God. He had heard. And so God can send somebody into our lives. Now listen, but that should not be the number one way that God speaks to you. You shouldn't be looking for somebody to give you a word. The Lord sent Ananias to him. Okay? You shouldn't be out hunting for somebody. Would you pray and tell me what the Lord's saying? No, you pray and find out what the Lord's saying. Be acquainted with His presence. Be acquainted with His voice. This is a wonderful thing. This is a personal relationship. This is not third party. Can He? Oh, yeah. And it can be a blessing. It can be a tremendous blessing. 
Let me talk to you about this inward witness, though. I've moved along pretty good to get to this point. These last two. These are primary ways. Again, if you're acquainted with His presence, you can experience what the Bible calls an inward witness. Let's read it. Romans 8, 16. For the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Let's read that together, Romans 8, 16. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Now, how do I know that I'm saved? I know it right in here. His Word tells me. His Word tells me. But right in here. My goodness, if you know you're saved, there's nobody talking you out of it. You've got a witness on the inside of you. But that witness is, I'll tell you, a lot of times I'll walk in somewhere, and, and you've had this happen. You may have not recognized it, but when I say it, you'll say, oh, yeah, I've had that happen. You walked in somewhere, and you just knew that person you was talking to was a Christian. There was just a witness. That means there was a joint agreement. Just a witness. Just a you know, there'll, there'll, there'll be times that, you know, that I, you know, you need to make a decision. I need to make a decision. It might be about family for me. It might be about church. It, I, I may be having to make some sort of decision about something. And it's sometimes just on the inside. I just get a witness. It's just the right thing to do. He's in it. There's peace in here. That's one way of saying it. There's peace in here. Another way of saying it, it's like the green light is on. But then there's, there's time, there's caution. I'm about to do something. Be careful. Be careful. Sometimes when I'm talking to somebody, I'll, I'll, I'll be rolling along and all of a sudden I'll... Just be careful. It doesn't say don't talk. Be careful. But then there's sometimes that God's not in something and it's, it's like the... One man said it's like having a check in here. Or it's a red light. You're uncomfortable. There's not an agreement. The Lord is not in it. The Lord's just not in it. That's that inward witness. You don't hear something, you know something. See, so many times Jesus, He just knew. He just knew. Right in here. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Hi, this is good for everybody. It's necessary. The reason we often miss God is because we're, we're praying and hoping. We're praying and hoping we're doing the right thing. Well, you don't have to pray and hope you do the right thing. And listen, thank God for people that want to do the right thing. Can you say Amen. Yeah, thank God for people who want to do the right thing. But that you don't have to pray and hope you can know. And just wait until you know. Just wait until you know. Had somebody's making a big decision. They were good folks, really good. They're good folks right now. They're trying to make a decision. And they was wanting to go to the, they was wanting to go to the mission field. One week they're going to go here. The next week, they're going to go there. And then the next week, they're going to go over here. And they come ask me, said, said, Pastor, what do you think? Brother Bill's what they said. Brother Bill, what do you think? I said, well, you know, it really doesn't make any difference what I think. I'm not a lot of help sometimes. The truth was, I did help them. I said, I can tell you this, the confusion isn't God. The confusion isn't God. Now, I said, I, 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 I'll tell you one other thing that just based upon my experience. I says, normally the first thing you hear is God and everything else is rhetoric. You know what they did? They did the first thing God told them to do. They had peace about it. You know, we talked about that. Have peace. Didn't make any difference. Did I, Listen, I, I was clueless why they would want to do what they were going to do. All right? I didn't have any, you know, didn't seem like a good idea to me. But it didn't need to. 
I, it doesn't have to make sense to me. They just need to know what God wants them to do. Is there a witness? Is there peace? If there's confusion, if there's fear, I mean, I'd back away and I'd, I'd just find out. I'd, I'd just pray until there was, there'd be peace there. See, the sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. Is there a witness on the inside? Does it, do you sense? That means, is there, what, what, what do two witnesses do? Well, if they're in agreement, you know you have the truth. Isn't that right? His Spirit bears witness with our spirit. Does that make sense to you? When the two witnesses agree, or the two, you know, your spirit bears witness with God's spirit, you know that you hit the nail on the head. Now, again, I'm telling you, most of the time I'm not walking around and, and the Lord's saying, Hey, Bill. <laughs> it's just, oh, yeah, I, some, yeah, I'd like for him to make it real clear, you know, and, and uh, you know, draw me a picture, Lord. And uh, how about a map or, or something yeah. like that? But the truth is, we've got a map, we've got his word. Yeah. You know? And again, many times he just speaks to us through his word. But again, is there agreement? Or is there no peace there? Am I unsettled about it? You know, I'd never pick up and move if, if I was unsettled. I wouldn't change my job if I was unsettled about it. When, I, when I'm done pastoring, I'll be settled and he'll be settled. I'll have peace. My, my, my spirit will bear witness with his. Or he'll bear witness with mine because it's his will we're trying to accomplish. Romans 8, 16, Message Bible. Listen to this. God's spirit touches our spirit and confirms. Now see, in this case, this is about salvation. Confirms we're really the children of God, that we're really saved. But he'll confirm, are you in the will of God? He'll and confirm that's, that's what he wants you to do. Let's talk about the still small voice. Gosh, this is an important one. Still small voice. Again, you know, if God speaks out, out loud, what a, what a wonderful, powerful moment. But, but listen, this is no less supernatural. Nobody else hears it, just you. This is still small voice. Now, tell, tell folks all the time this. Feelings are loud. Fear is loud. Anxiety is loud. Jealousy is loud. Hurts loud. Pain's loud. Hope you're catching the theme here. How does God speak? Say it together. How does God speak? Pain's loud. Fear's loud. Hurts loud. How does God speak? That makes sense. I say, get it, you say, got it. Get it? Amen. 1 Kings 19, 11, and 12. I've taught this before, but this will help somebody and then it'll reinforce it for others. This is the prophet. And he's he's gone through a lot. And he's searching for God, and God says, Go out, stand in the mountain before the Lord. It says, And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great strong wind tore the mountain, and it broke the rocks to pieces before the Lord. But listen to me. But the Lord was not in the... The Lord is not speaking to people in Mississippi this morning through the wind. He is speaking to them this morning. It's through the help and comfort of other people. It's through a still, small voice. It's through His Word. He's speaking to others about acts of generosity to help those folks. He was not speaking to them through the tornado. Now, I'm not saying He didn't speak to them in it. While they're going through it, 
My goodness. I, hey, listen, I'm, I'm ahead of schedule. Let me tell these things. I know they've seen all them notes out there. They said, bye, we're going to be here late. I've moved right along. Listen, I, but I, we went to Joplin after the great tornado that hit Joplin. And you pulled in the Joplin, and when you go past where, where Denny's is and lots of the restaurants there close to I-44, it looked like it always looked. But then you crest the hill. When you crest the hill, it looked like another planet, like nothing we'd ever seen. Some of those trees just looked like the limbs that, that they were just hands, just took them and just twisted the branches and jerked them off. Of course, many of the trees were just gone. They were bare of leaves, most of them bare of limbs if the tree was still there. Blocks were just devastated. And we went down, uh, we went twice. The first time, I, I might have been, doesn't make any difference. We went down the street, we went to a cul-de-sac. Who was there? Ms. Cheryl. Ray, were you, did you go down to cul-de-sac with us? Miss Glenda was there. We go down this cul-de-sac, and in the very end of this cul-de-sac, there's a house here. Well, there was a house here. But there's a piece of one, and there's, there's not much here. And then most of the house here is gone. And every one of them had a story. See, in the midst of it, God can't speak. In the very deepest part of the cul-de-sac, when you drive straight into it, there was a, was a black couple lived there. And the man I'm telling you by, you know, spiritually, they were awake. I'm telling you. And he said, he said, we heard it. And you always hear the same sound like a freight train. And they lived in a house, uh, well, split level, split level house. You know, you go in the front door. Of course, you did go up steps. Go in the front door. You go downstairs to go to the basement. You go up the stairs to go on the first floor. He said, I grabbed my wife, and he said, the only thing I could think was to go in the closet. And he said, and the tornado came through and says, we're hanging on to it. He says, the door is heaving in and out. And he's hanging on to the door. He said, and finally it passed. And he thought, gosh, we've made it. And they came out. The only thing standing is the cement porch and the closet underneath it. The house is gone. On their left, there's that family story is almost identical. Whole first floor is gone. It even pulled a lot of the sheeting off the floor. And they survived in that closet in the basement. Listen to this one. But then there's some little children across the street and their mom's not home yet. And the little kids told their mom when she came home, she was this big guy, had almost yellow hair. He was dressed in white. And he grabbed us and put us in the closet. Wow. God's very present help in a time of trouble. But he didn't send the trouble. He didn't send the trouble. He said there was a great... I said, that's not my story. That's their story. We're, the, we're there within days of this having happened. Just days. They told us their stories like that all over town. The Lord passed by. A great strong wind tore the mountains, broke the rocks to pieces before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. We continue, and after the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. Now, is he a present help? Yes. Can he speak to them during those times? Yes. But he didn't use the tornado, or he didn't use the hurricane. I mean, it wasn't his. He wasn't sending the trouble. He's not the one who sends the earthquake after the earthquake of fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, here's this verse. There's a still, small voice. See, God's not shouting at you. 
It's a still, small voice. We get quiet before the Lord. We listen. My daughter was going to college. She's going up to Kirksville. It was Truman University. I don't know if it's still Truman. I think they've changed the name of it. Maybe Northeast Missouri State or something like that. It seemed like they have changed the name. Nice campus. Took her, dropped her off. She had lots of scholarship. Her, her schooling was paid for. She's going to do pre-med. And uh, she got up there, and she was just, just terribly unhappy. Just wasn't ready. You know, not everybody's ready for college the day they get out of high school. She just wasn't ready. Just wasn't, you know. Didn't make her a bad person. She just wasn't ready. And so anyway, she, she calls me, and she says, Dad, so I'm just not happy. I want to come home. And, of course, now I'm a parent. This thing's paid for. You, do you understand, girl? This thing's paid for. Yeah, Daddy, I, I, I know that. I, I'm, I'm terribly unhappy. I said, will you pray and you call me back? I, you know, the Lord will fix it. He's straightening her out. She calls me back. She says, Lord, Daddy, I, I, I think the Lord, he thinks it's okay. I said, well, all right, now you let me pray. And then she says this, oh, how long will that take? I mean, I think she's thinking I might wait a semester. And uh, I said, honey, it won't take long at all. Are you sure? I said, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it won't take long. And so I just get away and, I, and I'm praying. And, and uh, the Lord says to me, uh, you got a will? I said, yeah. He said, she got a will too. How come you won't let her come home? I got it. I call her, what did he say? All I heard, now, did I hear that out loud? No. Still, as he got down, it's quiet. It's praying right there. Still, small voice. He says, today, if you hear his voice, listen, I could pray, I could have something I need to pray about this afternoon. Now, there are times that it, you know, it doesn't happen in just a few minutes. There's times that, you know, you need to stay before the Lord. But listen, none of that's wasted time. My goodness, I'm having a conversation with the Heavenly Father. Nothing wrong with hanging out with Him. But He'll speak. And it's a still, small voice. 1 Kings 19.12, and it says, and again, after the earthquake, fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And again, he says, and after the fire, he says that still small voice. And I close with this, not in your notes. I ran out of room. But I did cover the ground I intended to. God doesn't need a catastrophe to speak to you. He doesn't need to wreck, ruin, or destroy your life to get your attention. Soon you understand that you're a spiritual being. He doesn't have to break your leg. Does that make sense? He doesn't have to give you cancer. Truth is, he doesn't. I mean, how can you be, how can you be the giver of cancer and the healer also? Hear, hear me graciously, graciously. I want to be careful. You, you, anytime you're dealing with something that's serious, you know, you know, cancer can be life and death sometimes. I've got people dealing with it. Now, for you, it's life. Listen to me. Well, I'm believing God with you. But people, sometimes they get mixed up in their thinking and they get confused. And, 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 and in their desperation, in their difficulty, they cry out to God. They hear from God. He moves in their life. And that's good. In it, He can speak to you. In it, I'll even say He will speak to you. But listen, in it, He's speaking to you just in the ways that I said. He's not using the cancer to talk to you. 
He's using your stillness to talk to you. He's using His Word to speak to you. Right here in that, that innermost being, He's speaking to you. So many times people say, well, you know, the Lord sent this disease or the Lord, you know, I, I, I lost my ability to walk. And listen, I know that happens to people. And I see people, they, they live out the rest of their days having suffered an, an affliction, but they continue to believe and trust God. And that's what we're called to. We're called to live the faith. All right? We're just believing God. We're going to trust Him. But there's a part of me that would say this to folks, see, because I, I want to see as many people get healed as I possibly can. Get help on this side. When you get to the other side, we get it. You're not going to get healed. You're going to get a new body. Do you understand? We say things sometimes that this it's not in the Bible, Brett. It's just not there. When you get to heaven, it won't be healing. It'll be a brand new body. Bill's conviction, but I like Bill's convictions. I like Bill's convictions, Jeff. We get to heaven. I think everybody looks like they're 33. Yeah, 33, prime of life. You like that, Frank? Frank says, sign me up. That's just Bill's conviction, but that's what Jesus looked like. Yeah, but it'd be a brand new body. It won't be a healed body. It's a brand new one. This mortality will put on immortality. Yeah. No healings for here. And I know they can write a good book and they can make a good story and tell a poem. And, and, and listen, I like the good book and I like the nice story and I like the poem. But when you're believing God, you better listen to what the Word of God says. Again, I, I, I was speaking to somebody in, in a minute with all kindness, all kindness. And they're telling me how the Lord had given them this disease that they're walking through life with. And they want me to pray. And man, I'm glad to pray. And they said, you know, the Lord put me here so he could talk to me. And I said, no, 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 no. For we pray, we got to straighten this out. We got to straighten this out. Now, they're shocked. But listen, I'm, I, I, my heart goes out to them. I, I want to see them. I want to see them get a touch. Touch from God. I, I want them to be at least be in the best position possible to get a touch from God. And I said, You're saying God put you here so he could speak to you, and now you want me to help pray you out of it? Now you want me to help you pray you out of the place that God wanted to speak to you. Why, well, you got a puzzled look on their face. I said, listen, I do believe that God has spoke to you. I, I, I want you to know, I, I don't doubt that. He has spoke to you. But listen, he wanted to speak to you all along. Yeah. Today, if you hear his voice, God doesn't need to wreck, ruin, or destroy your life to get your attention. You're a spiritual being. You've got to tune up those ears. We must be aware that he's present. We've got to recognize his voice. You know, we can be just like the people around Jesus, and we can just say, I just, just thundered. They miss what he said. The hidden man, the inward man, the eternal man, the place where the love of God operates, where the peace that passes understanding, all those unseen things that makes up the human personality, is in the hidden man. Can't be explained by science. It's not just electrodes firing. I am a spirit. I have a soul. I live in this body. Father, I thank you. I thank you. We, we are your children. We've been born again. Nicodemus was puzzled as we would be. Can we enter again a second time into our mother's womb? No. That which is born of flesh is flesh, but that which is born of spirit is spirit. 
Our spirits were made alive. We passed from death unto life. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us, talking to us, and helping us. Lead us. Help us to be aware of your presence in times of worship and reading the Word. But, Father, as we walk along the way, when we're at work, help us. Father, I thank you. I love you. Ms. Shayla, if you could come and... You might be here this morning, maybe you've never made a decision about Jesus. It's the most important decision there is in life. See, it's the thing that we'll be judged for when we stand before the Father. Oh, yes, God wants us to be righteous and live a holy life. And, but listen, we stand before God, we'll, we're... We'll be judged. What do we do with his son? John the 16th chapter says, When the Spirit of when the, when the, the Holy Spirit comes, he will convince. Some translations say convict. So I'll say both. He will convince and he will convict the world of, of sin. And notice what it says, the next statement. Because he believes not on me. You won't go to hell because. You had a drink. And you won't go to hell because you had sex outside of marriage. You said, Bill, you're giving people license. No, why not? I'm telling you, if you're going to straighten out anything, you've got to straighten out your relationship with God. That's what I'm saying. Convince them of sin because they believe not on me. That is the thing that stands between us and the Father. What do you do with my son? Have you ever said, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, save me, cleanse me, forgive me. I accept you right now as my Lord, my Savior. Now, I'm not just praying a prayer. Gosh, I say this every week. There's not just a formula. Pray a prayer, pray this prayer, and you'll be saved. No, it's saying with your mouth what you believe in your heart. It's, to, it's asking Jesus to be the Lord of your life. And it's giving him everything and not just your sin. Oh, he took your sin. He nailed your sin to the cross. He wants your sin. And he'll take your hurt, your pain. But he also wants your heart, your gifts, your talent, your ability. He wants everything. He wants to be the Lord of your life. I've been saying for years now, everybody wants a Savior, but not everybody wants Jesus to be Lord of their lives. See, there's where salvation takes place, when we give Him everything. We're going to pray. You may be listening online. Would you pray with us? I said, Pastor, I'm not certain I'm saved. Well, listen, if you believe that Jesus Christ is God's own Son, if you believe that he died on the cross and he died for you, you'd say, yes, yes, I, I believe those two things. Do you believe he was raised from the dead? If you still say yes, the question is, then will you make him the Lord of your life? Will you surrender everything? And if you will, you can be saved. Prayer is a means, it's a way to be able to accomplish that, to achieve it. We're going to pray. Say this with me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I believe in your son, Jesus. I believe that he lived. I believe that he died. I believe he died for me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Save me. Cleanse me. Forgive me. I'm giving you everything. You are my Lord. I'm fully following you. Thank you for saving me now. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, you, every head bowed, no one looking around. You might be here this morning and say, Pastor, I don't know that I've ever asked Jesus to come into my life. I don't know, I don't know if I've ever asked him to be the Lord of my life before. 
but I did this morning. In just a moment, I'm going to ask you, in just a moment, I'll ask you to look up. You might be here and say, Pastor, I've known the Lord, but I've wandered in my faith, but this morning I've reaffirmed my faith. He is the Lord of my life, and how grateful I am that He has saved me. You might be listening online. Is He the Lord of your life? Have you wandered in your faith? Did you reaffirm it this morning? If that's you on either one of those invitations, just look up real quickly. No one else looking around. We just want to know who we prayed with and for. Give us just a brief moment. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Yes. Anyone else? Father, you look down from heaven. And you see more than our eyes. You see our hearts. You see the decisions and the commitments that we make. Thank you, Father, for so great a salvation. Thank you for the sacrifice of your Son. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving us enough to die. Thank you, Father, for those who have looked up. Thank you, Father, for people listening online making decisions. I believe, Father, that the burden of sin has been removed. You took it. On the cross, you said it's finished, it's paid for. Thank you, Father, it's paid. Thank you, Father, that on the inside, the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts. Thank you, Father, right now, that they know your peace, your love, and your forgiveness. Father, we thank you for these things right now. In Jesus' name, Lord, we love you. Let's all stand to our feet for just a second.